Lucky Benedict Show, coming to you live on Web Radio Network. You are listening to our show here on Spreaker Live on the Web Radio Network. And I thank everyone for coming to join us here tonight for our show. And we have, well, I have an amazing, amazing guest tonight. And um, I know you're just going to love her. I received um, her book today, which is one of the things that we're going to be talking about. But it's not just about her being an author. This woman is amazing. She produces her own show. She is the host of her own show. She is, she tries travels, doing all kinds of events, which she's got uh, some upcoming events coming very soon. Um, and we will discuss all of this. So I want to welcome to our program, Dr. Kelly Renee Schutz. How are you? I am good. And thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, that's totally my pleasure. I am so excited to um just to have met you recently. And um, so, Dr. Kelly, uh, there is so much I want to talk about because I, when I'm texting with you back and forth, I'm just like, I seem like I never have a time that I don't have a question for you. So I know I, I can tend to ramble sometimes with, with my guests, but I don't want to do that tonight. I want to you know, really go and talk about the, the things that are most important that, for you tonight. So I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll move into some other topics. Well, okay, then. Can, first of all, can you hear me all right? Is my, uh, am, I, I, am I coming through loud and clear for you guys? Yes. Okay. Well, um, that is a very deep subject because I have a multitude of different, I would say, characters behind who I am. And I have evolved over time. And just the very short and skinny about me, I, uh, I'm a retired um, college professor slash paralegal litigation with some undercover duties uh, person. I have done many different things in my life, but all of this has come kind of full circle and has brought me to where I am with you right now, which is I am a TV talk show host producer and also a top ranked podcast and uh, a writer and of course a creator and, um, and all sorts of things that go along with that, um, a speaker uh, vendor, uh, you name it, and, an, and a celebrity interviewer, for God's sake. So there are, there's many, many different things that have come about um, that I've actually used my degrees for um, that I never thought I ever would once I retired. So that's kind of a, kind of an interesting twist to my life. But that's where I'm at right now. And um, I'm very glad to be here on your show today. I hope your listeners will uh, gain some insight. Or if anything, they'll just keep tuning in because I know that you're doing a quality show here. And that's what's important for all of us, especially those of us in this field. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Well, uh, you know, listeners, I really, I just think that Kelly, every time I, I listen or, or read a little bit more about her, I, I'm so impressed with you, Kelly. I, I seriously am. And I, I guess that right now I'm thinking about this book because I, when I looked through it, uh, uh, number one, one, it's just such a nice book. I mean, it's like really a nice book. And then when I look through it, I'm like, whoa, you definitely have had a haunted life. And I love how you break everything down in this book. I mean, I, I look at a lot of books. I read a lot of books. And I talk about a lot of books. But I really love how you put what how you put this book together. It's very easy to read. And um and it's just so great. I love that. So it, how many books have you actually written? Well, like three? No, it's, it's, it's 11. And uh, it all started, 
out um, back in 2016, actually. Um, so I've written 11 books in um, six years time here. I actually held, when you're a college professor, you can't just, you know, say in front of your students, oh, by the way, I have a hobby on the side. Um, it, it, my hobby was investigating bed and breakfast um, uh, hotels and, and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, since I had started having experiences and I was trying to figure all of this stuff out, well, well, I finally decided that I needed to journal out my stories um, and somehow make some sense out of them. So the first book, which was back in 2016, started it all off. And then, um, then from there, I became, uh, people were starting to interview me and uh, have me on their radio shows. And I didn't realize at the time how, um, how big some of these people were. And uh, that led to book number two. And then my experiences kept leading to book number three. And now it's at 11. And of course, people are asking me if I'm going to write book number 12. And the way that I design my book is a little bit different. The one that uh, Mercedes is talking about here is called Haunted Life, which is my most um, recent book. But the three books that really stand to its testament of the experiences that I have gone through are um, what I call 9, 10, and 11, which is uh, Message Received, Manifestations, and Haunted Life. And, and all of those are broken down into the story. They're broken down into some kind of theory or analogy of what I thought was going on. And then I start asking questions to to the person who's reading it. And then I try to tie it all together and make some sense out of the moment. Well, what has been happening lately, and for those of you who have the opportunity to see the cover of Haunted Life, um, I believe I've been now having extraterrestrial visitations, um, everything from a hand mark that I had on my body for three uh, hours to uh, um, having some miraculous healings and cleansings and visitations in my room. I could go on and on and on about that, but Haunted Life um, has a flavor of both paranormal, which I refer to as apparitions, ghosts, and some extraterrestrial, which of course I refer to some type of visitation from perhaps um, uh, some type of an alien species, which by the way, um, I think many of us are still running after trying to figure out who's been visiting and, and who has not. So that's how the, I make, a, make my books user-friendly to read because I feel it's important for people to digest this. I'm a teacher by nature. I've always had to break things down um, non-scientifically and just simply and, and to, the relate, to the ability where people can relate to this stuff um, this is why I think um, my books have been relatively successful. So there you have it there, Mercedes. Oh, my gosh. I, I applaud you. I, you know, I've been thinking about writing a book, but I, I haven't actually found something that I felt like, like, how how could I do this cor correctly? And then when I saw your book today, I'm like, wow, this is incredible. I mean, it makes sense. I, and I, what you just described here. Um, how you put this into a format, it, you know, wow, you could teach a class on this, Kelly. That could be something else you could do. Like, <laughs> Well, that's what my 20 years of being a college teacher has taught myself is how to break it down into bite-side pieces. But, you know, the thing is, is when people do write their books, and there's just a ton of them out there, obviously, um, uh, even with people and their own experiences, I had to find a format that um, that just to me was easy to digest. And so mine is very different compared to everybody else's, but it speaks to my style, it speaks to who I am, and it speaks to the way that I try to teach the world about at least some of the experiences that I have gone through, so. Well, I love it. I, I think this is amazing. So let's talk about this. So you literally just kind of stepped into the paranormal world. So how many years ago? Not that long ago. No, it's actually been. 
you've had your paranormal world life, but you know, to actually be doing what you're doing now, I mean. Yeah. So, um, just to give people a, a mini biography of me, um, I was actually. Uh, starting to have premonitions at the age of three, four years old, where I was um, having dreams. And then the next day I would see these dreams play out on television and it would be these horrific, tragic events. Now that's where it started. But when you're a kid, um, your pieces aren't put together yet. All right. So you're, you're thinking, well, maybe I'm causing this after a while when it seems too coincidental or whatever, but things started to evolve after the age of 14, when I had wished to have seen a ghost on my grandparents' property. And years later I saw two and photographed two, which, um, that picture of Mercedes, if you haven't seen it yet is in the book. And then how I fell into where I'm at right now, there was a period of time. Now, keep in mind, I've got five advanced degrees, and that doesn't say much anymore. But what it tells you is that I was busy. And so when I was busy throughout all these years of going to college and and doing this and doing that and trying to figure myself out and find my way, it was when I actually finally said, okay, I'm done with my degrees now, you know, and I, I refocused and went back to um, wanting to, to, to figure out a little bit about all this stuff that had happened to me when I was a child. And then, of course, the mistake I made, and I, I call it a mistake, but uh, an interesting one is that um, the property where I'd wished to see a ghost on, which I photographed and the photo is in my book, um, showed up in the window, a screened window after a uh, tornado event, straight line wind went through, ripped through the property, uh, sizzling and lighting it up like a Christmas tree. And then all of a sudden I, I heard that's where my, I developed my telepathy too. Um, I, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why I could always, you know, everyone says, oh, you're crazy if you're hearing voices in your head. But I was hearing voices in my head and I was hearing guidance and and things like that. And I thought, well, you know, I can't tell somebody that I'm hearing voices in my head. They're going to think I'm an absolute, you know, wacko case. And so the thing is, is that um, but when I when that when the apparition showed up in the screen window and I discovered that on a negative, by the way, I had and everything, I went back to the property and I just looked at the window and they didn't show it to me there. I never saw them at the time when I photographed them. I said, what message do you have for me? And the message that came to me, which didn't necessarily sound female, and it didn't necessarily sound male. It was a very interesting um, but voice, but it, was, it just said, um, your genealogy is wrong. And the little girl that showed up in the window and the older man that showed up in the window, I believe to this day that they were uh, my great the, the people that that lived there and who built the farm and the little gal actually died two miles down the road and she was probably traveling with my great grandfather who built the house and all that and um and then i looked i looked at it and i said you know there might be something to this although that was really weird and so i started doing some more research and sure enough um it was whoever it was that said that voice to me was right. Um, the little girl's name that I had identified was not the little girl that was showing to me in the window. And, and then I figured it all out. And, um, you know, I had never seen them since. But the thing is, is that property became relatively haunted. <laughs>
You have just heard part of the interview with Tessa Morrow from Paranormal Prowlers podcast. Be sure to listen to the full interview over on Spreaker with the Web Radio Network. This is Mercedes, the Mercedes Lucky Benedict Show. Thanks you so much for listening.